My name is David Crow, and I'm one of the pastors here at Grace Bible Church in Fairburn, Georgia, and also on the web at gracebible.faith. That's gracebible.faith. And here at Grace Bible Church, we're working our way through the book of James, and this last Sunday, we covered the middle or bridge portion of the fifth major section of the book of James, a section that covers chapter 2, verses 14 through 26, and is itself broken up into three parts. The first part answers the first of two questions that James gives us in verse 14, and the third section answers the second question that he also gives us in verse 14. Now, between these two engagements is the portion that we covered on Sunday, verses 18 through 20, the second of the three parts, where it states, But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. The demons also believe and shudder. But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? Now, we refer to this middle section as the bridge portion of the passage because it does take elements of both sections and brings them together. So, James revisits the fact that a workless faith is a useless faith. That was the first section, and it ties in to verse 18. And then he prepares us for the subsequent treatment that a workless faith cannot save. That was the third, that will be the third section, and it ties into verse 19. Now, following 18 and 19, he provides a direct conclusion in this section. Faith without works is useless, a conclusion similar to how he concludes the other two sections, both of which more emphatically state that faith without works is dead. Now, beyond similarities uh, were also differences with the sections. The most notable difference is that in this portion of the text, James does not use an illustration designed for the argument or drawn from history but chooses to simply make a, a direct line of argumentation. He does this by uh, restating an opponent's conclusion that presumes that one can simply have faith while another has supporting works for their faith. A conclusion that James easily dismantles by pressing his opponent to prove their faith without works, which they've concluded are not necessary. The problem is you can prove nothing without evidentiary works. James then presses the matter further by exposing the fact that one can be doctrinally sound to absolutely no benefit if they lack living faith. In other words, they can have a, uh, they can believe a wealth of truth and still perish in their sins. A matter he draws out with an example that would have been especially poignant to his readers, which were believing Jews who all but certainly grew up citing from Deuteronomy 6 twice a day, likely even continuing that practice even through the present, a passage known as the Great Shema that affirms, as James states here, that God is one, a truth that the demons also believe. Therefore, there must be something more than doctrinal affirmations and insights because, as in this case, believing is not enough. However, believing is enough when it's a belief that has been secured in the mind, transformed the heart, and goes on to be expressed by works, this reflecting the heart of what James has and will continue to develop, namely, a living faith. Now finally, woven into our message this last week was a call to give thanks to God for these truths, but also the magnificent range of truths that we've covered over the course of our study through the book of James to present. So chapter 1, 1, all the way to our present study. And Lord willing, through the remainder, uh, where next week we'll cover the remainder of chapter 2 this next week. Now, for access to the full message, you can go to our website at gracebible.faith. Again, that's gracebible.faith. And here you can access all of our messages in James, as well as our other studies, both in video and audio formats, which are also available on YouTube and Spotify, both linked through our website. Now, we hope that our study together in the book of James has been and will continue to be a blessing to you as we all pursue James' aim of being made perfect and complete, lacking in nothing as we walk in the wisdom from above. Grace and peace to you all.